you know, and sad that, but he was being a father. And I, I start thinking about what he's done after basketball and what, what a great role model and message to all these young kids. Cause you know, me being a college coach and an NBA coach, um, kids would always ask me about certain players. And, you know, I grew up watching Oscar and Bill Russell and Wilt and um, Jerry West. And I know the effect those guys had on my life. And then I remember young players admiring Doc and Larry and Magic. And then it became Michael and then Allen. But now all these young players now, it's Kobe. You know, Kobe's the nearest thing to Michael. I know LeBron's special, and I'm proud of what he's done. But, you know, think about all these young kids that think that once they're all going to play in the NBA or play in the NFL, um, and then they don't even think about life after basketball. And here's such an unbelievable role model. It blew me away. And then um, Mark Turgeon, who played and coached with me, this, their team just beat Indiana on the road in the last second. And he calls me and tells me that they're not even thinking about beating Indiana. They're crushed about Kobe. And I just can't imagine, you know, how it's continued to grow like that. Uh, it's, it's just beyond belief. What, what kind of relationship did you have with him, Coach? Well, one, I should have drafted him. Um, I was at Indiana. We had the 10th pick. Um, and our scout loved him, Courtney Whitty, and then one other person wasn't sold on him. Um, and, you know, but I had, I had followed him. I had a lot of people talk to me about him, um, especially Tony DeLeo, who was in Philly. But I remember John Calipari who was with the Nets. They had the eighth pick, and John called me about him and said he wanted to draft him. What did, he, what did I think? And I told him I thought he was great. And John told me that they wouldn't let him draft him. And then he finally got him to agree that he could draft him, provided Kerry Kittles wasn't there. So Kittles was there. They took him at eight. John would probably still be the Nets with the Nets if they had drafted him. And I'd, if I'd have drafted him at Indiana, we'd, I'd probably still be in Indiana. People won't believe me, but that's probably true. But he... I've known him, you know, he's supposed to play on the 2004 Olympic team, and unfortunately, some things happened. You know, Carl Malone lost his mom. He couldn't play. 9-11 happened. The whole team didn't come. and um, We played against each other all the time. He used to come to me and tell me that Eric Snow, Aaron McKee, you know, guarded him better than anybody. Uh, but he was just a group. Unbelievable talent. And then the, the greatest thing about him, you know, Coach Smith used to always say, um, talent is a gift from God, character is a choice. Um, Kobe had unbelievable talent, but he might have been the hardest worker ever. And kids don't uh, understand that. Um, you know, you, you can really be good at this game, but if you want to be great at anything, you got to put in the work. And this guy... This guy put in the work. I mean, he was he was incredible about that and preparing. Larry, they continue to play games as scheduled yesterday. If you had to coach in one of those games, would you have been able to do it? I don't know. Um, you know, I coached against Michael his last game, and that was really tough. But it was neat being in Philly to, to see how the people honored him. I coached against Reggie his last game in Indiana. That was tough. Um, I was on my way to North Carolina when President Kennedy got shot. And uh, I remembered how it, I drove for 11 hours and going through little towns and seeing people go to churches. You know, Kobe dying yesterday and seeing the outpouring of feelings for this guy, it almost was like, you know, when President Kennedy was shot. Um, I don't know if I could have done it. I saw, it, but the one thing that I would have probably thought, um, he never missed games. Right. You know, this thing about not playing in a game. Now he, him and Allen, you know, some of the guys that I've been around, they they wouldn't dare miss a game. And Kobe's legendary about that. 
You know, you, but, men uh, you mentioned Allen, uh, and, uh, you know, you also mentioned how hard Kobe worked. And Allen, you know, was quoted you know, today as saying, Kobe went to the gym and I went to the club, and that's the difference. And, and I guess that would be true, right? Well, you know, Allen prepared in training camp. Um, he came to every game and tried to win every game. And I, you know, maybe at the time I was coaching, there was some things that I wish he would have done differently. But he doesn't ever have to apologize for what he's done. But, but all the players will let you know um, just what Kobe was about. Uh, I'll give you a story. When I was a college coach, they had ABC and D camp, a Nike camp with 100 best high school players. And um, a bunch of them, the whole camp was offered an opportunity to watch Kobe work out in the summer. And they said, be ready at 545. And actually, all the kids wanted to go. But they didn't realize it was 545 in the morning. <laughs> and, you know, that was his ritual. He did that the whole summer, twice a day. And, you know, when, when these kids that are so gifted and you try to tell them that, you know, it's not about this gift you have, it's how you use it. And he not only used it when he played, he was using it after he was done, finished playing. And we need role models. You guys know that. And wh what a role model. Um, I was watching Tiger Woods talk about him, and the, and the thing that Tiger said endeared him so much to him was the way Kobe played both side, sides of the ball for 48 minutes. You being the, the basketball um, savant that you are, what, what was it about his game that impressed you the most? Well, that was, that's a neat thing that you said. I remember Jerry West and I were talking one day, and Jerry was asking me who I thought was the best player, and I, I couldn't come up with one. There were so many I admired. And he said, Larry, you know, Kobe is the only great one that guards the best player every single night. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about that, and that was, that was true. Because, you know, if you're a coach, you got to be careful about having your best player sometimes put himself in jeopardy where he might get in foul trouble. But Kobe took that challenge every single night. And that was like Michael. Um, you know, that's what separates some of these great, great ones from the very, very best. So how but, uncommon uh, is that, Coach? Like, l is it really only Kobe and Michael that come to mind, that all-time great scorers who want to D up the best offensive player every possession? Well, I don't think sometimes it's always up to the player. You know, a lot of times it's up to the coach. And you got to, especially in today's game, the way they call fouls, can you imagine how many points a game Michael and Allen and Kobe would average? I mean, it, so, you know, from a coach's standpoint, a lot of times you would probably be the one that would make that decision. But when it came to the guts of the game, the, the great ones will take that challenge. You know, Jerry West was his, good a defender as there ever was um so I, I hate to pick out anybody but when i hear jerry west say that about kobe and mention it because there were a lot of great players at that time that was the first thing he said to me and unfortunately you know we, when we talk about superstars we very rarely ever talk about the other side of the ball you know everybody was telling me i had no superstars in dallas i mean I don't know how you can say Ben Wallace or Rasheed Wallace or Chauncey or some of those guys weren't superstars because they did more than just score the ball. Um, you know, you look at the Knicks teams with Coach Holtzman, those guys guarded. They even got Pearl to guard. And, you know, everybody thought that wouldn't work out. Um, but I think it's a coach's decision, and unfortunately – so many people, that when they write about greatness and they talk about greatness, they never mention how you make your teammates better. And it's not only scoring the ball. It's doing all the other things that make other people better, and that's what Kobe did. Before we let you go, Coach, I'm just wondering.